All right, so what is up guys? Welcome to the final part of our chatbot tutorial, where in this video we'll be gluing all of the parts that we created and putting them together. So let's get started immediately by going to our main activity, which we are already inside. So all you have to do is open your Java folder, click on the com package, click on your UI package, and you'll have the main activity inside there. So just make sure you go on this screen and I'll actually close all the other tabs. And uh, right under the class, we want to create a few variables. So the first one's gonna be a private late in var, and that's going to be an adapter of type messaging adapter. And under that, we're gonna create a private value, which is going to be called bot list. And that's gonna be a list of the bots that we will be speaking to. So this is going to be a set list and we can actually omit the type because we just want to insert a few names such as Peter, Francesca, Luigi, and our favorite Igor. Then we can move on to the onCreate where we have to insert a few methods. So the first one we want to insert is the recycler view method, which hasn't been created yet. And we will definitely create that in just a moment. And then we also want to handle our click events. So we will create a function for that. And finally, we want to randomly speak with one of the people from the bot list. So we're gonna create a value of random and that's going to equal a number between zero to three. And we just have to call dot random. Then we can refer to our bot list, but we actually have to go ahead and create another function for that. And that's gonna be the custom message for the bot to speak. So we're just gonna call it custom message. And inside here, we're just going to enter our message. So hello, today you are speaking with and we have to refer to our bot list. So let's go bot list at the index of the random number we created. And then we can add a comma and say how may I help? And that will be the first message generated in our recycler view. So we already have a message there and the user feels like he can actually start messaging. So let's get started with the custom message because that will be the first thing that pops up on the screen. So we'll type in private function custom message and that's gonna take a message of type string. And inside here we want to launch a coroutine. So we're just gonna type in global scope dot launch and inside here, we're just going to add a delay of one second and then with context, so we can actually switch it to the main thread and update the UI. So dispatches.main and then create another block. Then let's get a timestamp. So we're gonna type in value timestamp and that's going to equal the time dot timestamp. And then we can refer to our adapter. So we're gonna type in adapter dot insert message and that's the function we created inside the adapter and that's going to take a message as an argument. So let's go ahead and type in message which will take the message as the first value. Then it needs an ID which is going to be the receive ID. So we just type in receive underscore ID and then we have to import that. And finally, we will insert the timestamp in case you want to use that for the messaging. And one more thing we have to do is actually update the UI. So we scroll to the bottom. So we're always updated with the latest message. And to do this, all we have to do is get our recycler view messages and type in scroll to position. And the position is going to be the adapter dot item count minus one. And that will take us all the way down to the last message. So it will always stay up to date. Next, let's go ahead and take care of the recycler view so we don't get any null pointer exceptions. So we'll type in private function recycler view. And inside here, we're going to instantiate the adapter first. So that's going to equal a messaging adapter. And then we have to set the adapter for our recycler view, rv underscore messages dot adapter is going to equal that adapter. And finally, we have to refer to our layout manager. So rv messages layout manager, and that's going to equal a linear layout manager. And then we have to insert an application context as the context to make everything work smoothly. Then under this, let's go ahead and create the function that will send the message. So we're gonna type in private function send message. And the first thing we have to do inside here is get a value of message, which is going to equal our edit text dot text to string. And then we also want to get a value of timestamp, which is going to equal our time dot timestamp. And finally, we have to check if the message is not empty. And if it is not empty, the first thing we're going to do is set the edit text to nothing so that we can actually continue typing another sentence afterwards. So we're just going to set it to an empty pair of quotation marks. And then right under that, we have to go and call our adapter dot insert message. And of course we need to use our message data class. And inside here, we will add the message. We have to add that it is a send ID because we are the sender, import that. 
And finally, we can add the timestamp and this will send the message. And right below that, we have to scroll to the position of the message. So we're just gonna do the same thing that we did earlier and scroll to position, which is gonna be the adapter dot item count minus one. And we can tidy that up a bit. And right at the bottom of this send message function, we have to call bot response, which is going to be a new function that we will create really shortly. And this is just going to take the message that we decided to send and it's going to put it inside the object we created earlier so we can actually get a response back from the robot and continue chatting comfortably. And the point of this function is to send a message to the object that handles all of the requests and return a string that will be shown on the other side of the recycler view. So it will simulate someone else speaking. But of course we have to go down below and create this function, so private function bot response, and that's gonna take a message of type string. And the first thing we have to do inside here is create a response, which is gonna be a value, and it's going to equal bot response dot basic response. And then inside here, we'll just insert the message. Then whatever message we get back from this bot response, we're going to insert to the recycler view. So we're just gonna go ahead and type in adapter dot insert message, call our message adapter class, insert the response, and since this is a receiver ID, we have to go ahead and call receive ID and insert the timestamp. And there's actually one thing I missed completely here, and that is to create the timestamp at the top. So we're gonna go ahead and type in value timestamp, and that's going to equal our time dot timestamp. And also we need to wrap this in a coroutine. So we have to go ahead and type in global scope dot launch. And inside here, we're gonna add the delay as we did earlier. So this one over here, add a one second delay. And then we have to call with context so we can switch to our UI thread and call dispatches.main. Then let's go ahead and move these two lines inside the with context block so it can be executed comfortably. But after you insert the message, we want to make sure to scroll to the position as always. So actually this time, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the line we had earlier and just paste it inside. And then finally, there's one more thing inside here that we have to do and is create a when block. And that's gonna say when the response is equal to open underscore Google, then we want to start a new intent that will open Google for us. And to do this, all you have to do is type in value site, and that's going to equal an intent of type intent dot action view and then right below we'll go site dot data is going to equal a URI dot pass and inside here we need to insert the https colon double slash www dot google dot com and that will take care of passing this URI and making sure that we can actually go to it and finally we want to start an activity which will just open the site for us. So we're just gonna insert the site and that will take care of the open Google function. But as you may recall, there's another one that allows us to search on Google and I find much more useful. This one is the open search function. So we're just gonna go ahead and do the same thing essentially with a very minor exception. So let's go ahead and copy the first line, which is the value site. And on the second line, we're gonna create a value of search term, which is going to be a nullable value of string. And we're going to equal that to the message dot substring after, and we're just gonna add the term search. So everything that comes after search will be put inside the site searcher and it will just open whatever you decided to search. So everything that comes after search will be inserted. Then we're gonna go ahead and type in site.data and that's going to equal the URI.pass. And of course we have to insert another URI, but this time just go ahead and copy the Google part right here. And right after the last slash, we're going to add the word search with a question mark and you have to add the ampersand with a Q and and equal. And then we're going to interpolate and add the search term. So this is just how you can make a request on Google and you don't really need any API keys for that. It just opens Google with the term you decided to insert. And then of course, we want to make sure to start this activity and insert the site. And that will take care of opening a new page on Google with the term you have specified. And right after we handle the bot response, let's go ahead and create a function that helps us stay at the bottom of the screen in case the user navigates away from the app and comes back. We don't want it to start at the top of the recycler view every time, we want it to start at the bottom because that's where the latest message is. So to do this, we're going to override on start and right below on start, we're going to create a few lines of code which will help us with that. So the first thing we want to do is type in global scope dot launch and we're gonna give it a delay. Now we're gonna add with context which is going to be a dispatches.main. And inside here, rv underscore messages 
dot scroll to position. And since we've already done this a thousand times, we're just going to copy and paste it again and paste it inside there. So this will take care of just keeping us at the bottom of the screen. And now the very final thing to do before we can start this app and start using it is to create the function that handles the click events. So right below our on create method, we're going to go ahead and type in private function click events. And inside here, we just will set our on click listeners. So for button set, we'll just set an on click listener. And inside here, all we have to do is send the message. So we'll just call send message. Then we will also type in et message dot set on click listener. So every time we click on our edit text, we will also be brought to the bottom of the screen to stay up to date. So global scope dot launch, and we'll give it a delay of 100 milliseconds. And we're just going to scroll down to our on start and copy this line of code right here, which is the width context and the scroll to position. And we're just going to insert it inside the edit text set on click listener. And with that being said, that should handle all of the errors we had in our on create. It should have taken care of all of the functions that we created there. And we are finally ready to go ahead and run the application. So let's go ahead and click on run. And I will open my phone screen window so we can see what happens. Perfect. So as you can see today, we are speaking with Francesca and that means we can type in any message. So let's start with hello and click on send. And Francesca will say hello there. We can ask how are you and click on send and she will respond that she's fine. Otherwise, let's ask what time is it? And she will tell us the current time. Then let's go ahead and flip a coin and see what it lands on. I flipped the coin and it landed on tails. So that's pretty neat as well. And finally, let's see what the other functions were that I absolutely forgot. Let's solve a math equation. So 20 plus 64 or 644. And we will get the answer of 664. Then let's try opening Google. So we'll type in open Google. And you'll see that it will navigate us to the Google screen. And it actually failed because I happened to insert four www's instead of just three. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So as you can see down here, we have four instead of three. Let's just get rid of that and rerun the program. Now let's tell Luigi to open Google for us. So open Google and click on send. And this time you'll see that we actually get led to Google. Otherwise, let's go back to Luigi. And this time we're going to ask him to search cats and click on send. And that will load the cat page for us. So that is great. It handles all of the search queries that we have specified. Now let's just play around with the recycle view a bit more just by adding a few more messages such as let's say HHH, then let's say OOO, then let's say MMMM. And as you can see, once we get out of the app, and we go back to the app, we will be taken to the bottom of the screen. And also as a final functionality, you can click on any one of these messages and it will delete it. So if we click on IDK, it will make it disappear and it will give it a very nice animation to try to fill the empty gap in between the messages. So we can do it for any single message you see on the screen and that will take care of that. So it's a very nice uh, messaging app because it has really nice animations. And I hope this tutorial helped with understanding how you can create this kind of UI to make your own messaging app. And hopefully you can connect it to Firebase or whatever other backend you have and just make it sound or look really good. But uh, we're just going to say goodbye because this was the final tutorial. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. See you.